our spiritual authority. And the title of my message is, You Are Not a Wimp. You Are Not a Wimp. A wimp is a weak or cowardly or an unadventurous person. Or to be a wimp means to fail to do something as a result of fear or lack of confidence. So I say today, we are not wimps. God has fully armed us, and I'm going to teach on that today. Let's just, um, let me just pray. God, I thank you that you've created no wimps. We are strong and we are created, courageous. That you have created us in your likeness, in your image, which is powerful. Not only did you create us in your likeness, in your image, but you gave us all authority and all power, and you trusted us with that. And then on top of that, you said, hey, I'm just going to come live inside of you also. And you can use my name, and you can use my blood. <laughs> and I just thank you, Lord, that there would be a new boldness released on us today. I thank you that we are not controlled by fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Lord, I pray as I teach today, your presence would be here. Holy Spirit, make this revelation knowledge to our heart. Not just something like, oh, that sounds good. But it changes us. It changes us. We start taking new authority over things that should not be in our life. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. You know, spiritual authority is so powerful because not just for our lives. Like, we need to take spiritual authority over our lives, but but when we learn to take spiritual authority over our lives, we start helping others have spiritual authority in their life. You know, the enemy is just a big bully. I was thinking about that movie, um, Wizard of Oz. It was always such a weird movie to me. <laughs> you like it, I'm sorry. But, but you know, the wizard, it's all about this wizard and coming to this wizard, right? And it's this big, scary voice. And it, all it was was a scared little man behind a curtain. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm sorry, I just ruined it for you. <laughs> but that's the enemy. He's just a big, scary voice with no authority, you know, but we give in to it. And, and he's a bully. And, and we are not the wimpy kid. <laughs> we are the one to stand up against the bully, not just for ourselves, but for others who are be, being beaten up. You aren't a wimp. <laughs> You are fully capable, and it's just understanding the authority. And this is why it's so important that we teach on it over and over. Because here's the thing. There's some areas maybe we feel like we have more authority than others, or we haven't heard it for a while, or we kind of get lazy in our authority. Has that happened to anybody? All of a sudden, subtle things start coming in. Oh, I'm reminded of this dream. Let me tell you about this dream real quick, because it just popped in my head. In this dream, I was at a friend's house, and um, there was a room that nobody really went in because there was a garden snake, a garden snake, you know, harmless, but it had grown so big that my friend's like, oh, just don't go in there because there's a garden snake. I'm like, well, get the snake out. No, it's just, it's so big now. It's just so big now. I'm like, it's harmless. You have authority. Get the snake out. But they would rather just not go in that room and deal with it because it had gotten so big it was too much trouble, not worth it. And, and this garden snake was like um, terrorizing. It had no authority. And in my mind, I'm thinking, it's so easy. It's a garden snake. Get it out. You can use this room. And how many times does that happen where something starts so small, a little lie, a little influence of the enemy, a little sickness, a little pain, a little sadness, not full-on depression yet, a little this, a little that, and, and we tolerate it. We tolerate it. And all of a sudden, it grows so big, it's so overwhelming, we're just going to close the door and let it stay there. Because I'm still blessed. God still loves me. But he has given us all authority over everything, and we need to start taking the authority. Because once we start taking our authority, we take authority over our nation, over our city, over our home, over our neighborhood. God has not called us to be wimps. We're not weak and cowardly or unadventurous. Ooh, if you live by the Spirit, look for some adventure. Isn't that true? And it's scary and thrilling at the same time. 
but I wouldn't want to live any other life. Life without God is so boring. It's so boring. He is fun. He knows what thrills us. He knows what gives us joy. The world thinks sin is fun. God is fun. God is fun. And there's no consequences to it. Okay, so that was all just a freebie. (laughs) Turn with me to Ephesians 6. You want to know your authority? You have to get in your word. You have to get in your word. I mean, the New Testament, it's everywhere. It tells us who we are, what we can do, what God says. You know, in my home, if a sibling tells another sibling they need to do something, rarely will they listen to each other. But all they have to say is, well, mommy said, well, daddy said. And instantly, the other sibling has to surrender to that request. Well, our daddy has said a lot of stuff. And it's not our word, it's his word. And we have to start using his word because that is our authority. No matter what we feel, what we think, what's in the natural realm, we don't live in the natural realm. We have to stop living in the natural realm. We tap into the heavenlies. If there's anything in your life that doesn't belong in heaven, it shouldn't belong in our life. That's truth. So think about it. What's happening in your life? Then don't tolerate it. And maybe say, well, I prayed and I've done this. Keep praying. Keep standing. Don't give in. As soon as you give in and give up, that's when you lose. We keep standing. We keep believing. We keep thanking God. Not those depressing prayers that we're a victim. We're not a victim. We're not a victim to this world. We're not a victim to the enemy. We're not a victim to sin. Sin was conquered has no authority over us unless we let it okay Ephesians 6 um, and I'm starting with verse 10 a final word now all of Ephesians is so powerful if you want to grow in authority read Ephesians over and over and over again final word be strong with the Lord's mighty power now how are we strong his power He gives us power to make us look strong. It's God's steroids, supernatural steroids. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies and tricks of the devil. I didn't read anywhere here where he has power. He has strategy and he has tricks. He tricks us. He has strategies against us. But we're able to stand firm with God's armor. For we are not fighting against people made in flesh and blood, but against evil rulers, authority, and unseen world. How many times do we get mad at people? Retaliate towards people. That's the weapons of the enemy. I was was asking my mother-in-law, I said, tell me about spiritual authority. What do you think it is? You know, we're talking about speaking in tongues and all this. And she said, you know what? Love. You can keep your love on in a situation. You've won the war. Isn't that true? That somebody, the enemy can use somebody to push every button and you keep your joy. She said, joy and love. You have authority. You have authority over yourself. If somebody can't switch your emotions, get you to get angry or retaliate. We don't fight against people made of flesh and blood, but against evil rulers, authorities in the unseen world. You guys, there's an unseen world around us all the time. All the time, they do not sleep. But in that unseen world, we have angels from heaven, ministering spirits available to us. And against the mighty powers of darkness who rule this world. And against the wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Okay, the enemy is not more powerful than you. Let's just say that. The enemy is not more powerful than me. (laughs) Religion has made this enemy like he's so powerful, but we have power too, and it's a battle. That's not true. Satan was not made in the image and likeness of God Almighty. And he does not have the Holy Spirit in him. How could he be more powerful than us? He's not. He was not given all authority, and he does not have power. In Luke 10, 19, it says, look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions 
and to overcome all, to overcome all, to overcome all of the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. It doesn't say some, you might win some, you might lose some, but keep going. Good luck. God hasn't put a big, powerful enemy on earth to terrorize us and hopefully we'll make it through. He has no power. Jesus came and took the power back and given it to us. All authority over all the schemes of the enemy, over all the tactics of the enemy, all is there. And it says nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. This is a promise. This is our authority. Now, the enemy might be a better liar than you. He's good at lying. So if he has no power, how come he has open doors in our life? Because he loves to lie and he loves to trick. And once we believe it, once we have fear, we have an open door for him to come into our lives. That's with sin and anything else. Why does God not want us to sin? It harms us greatly. And it's a lie of the enemy. Sin doesn't just happen. It's starting to believe a lie. And it comes and rules in our life because whatever you believe, whatever you obey, you become a slave to. If I obey the word of God and the Holy Spirit, I'm a slave to righteousness and that will manifest in my life. If I obey the enemy, I'm surrendering to him and I'm a slave to the enemy. The biggest bully in the world. And that's an open door. You know, God has given us armor. He's given us everything we need. It's like locks on the door in your house, you know. We lock up and there's protection. But so many people are living with their doors wide open, windows open, and the enemy's coming in and they're blaming God. It's true, you know. We're the victim and God, you're not doing what you need to do. Jesus did everything he could possibly do. He laid down his life. There's nothing more he could do. That's why he seated the right hand of the Father and he said, hey, you're seated with me in heavenly places. Everything I have is yours. All authority I have is yours. He actually says we are one with him. I mean, that's hard to really, really believe deeply. The more we believe we're one with Jesus, the more authority comes out of us. And that's renewing our mind. I'm one with him. I'm one with him. Okay, going on, verse 13, use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Here's the thing. There is times we're going to have to resist and resist and resist. But the enemy, the Bible says that if we resist the enemy, what? Please. That resist, that word is not a passive word. Like, nah, nah. It's actually standing firm against, taking your ground. No, no. Not on my watch, not in my family, not in my life. And you know what? He doesn't always take no for an answer. Has anybody noticed that? Okay, I'm going to try tomorrow. I don't think, this is just my opinion. It's not theology. I, I don't think the serpent in the garden came that one time to Eve. I think he wore her down. I think it came over and over to put the seed, to put the seed, to put the seed. You know? And, and I do think that if she kept resisting, he would have gone. But maybe she's like listening, 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 listening. He has lots of time to plot and plan. And so we have to resist the enemy. And sometimes it's hard. Like when your flesh is wanting it, but resisting, right? To retaliate, not to gossip, not to lie. Not to do these things. Like we're resisting, resisting, but then it just becomes a part of us. It becomes easy because our yes becomes so big. And I want to tell you something. The enemy studies our weakness. Have you noticed everything happens at once? He's planning the perfect time. Oh, they, got, they didn't get very much sleep last night. Ooh, they got in a fight with their spouse last night. Ooh, their kids aren't obeying. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is my time I'm going to move in. You know, he knows our weakness. He's going to get us with those thoughts and those strategies. We're not, we're already not feeling good because he studies us. He knows our weakness. Sometimes he knows our weakness better than us. We've got to know our weaknesses 
and protect ourselves. If something is a struggle for me here, I'm going to run way over there. Why do we think we can play with fire and not get burned? If there's a struggle in your life, it is a strength to flee from it. Oh, I have the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be a good witness. I can hang around those people. I can do that. I can watch that. If it is any sort of a weakness, it is your strength and it is wisdom to run the other way. Maybe somebody else, it's fine for them. But we have to know our weaknesses and flee from it. I tell my kids, if this is sin right here, the Diaz are going to be way, way, way over here. We don't want to be around there because it's just such a slow move, you know? Why would he even want to be close to this when it hurts the Father's heart and it harms us? We want to be in the kingdom of light. And so we have to set ourselves up for success. And you know what's setting yourself up for success with the Holy Spirit. You know, I can't take somebody else's tactics We know what's going to set ourselves up for success in this world. It's not being around that person. It's not going to that place. It's not watching those things. It's, you know, whatever it is. It's in your word. It's praying. Whatever it is to set yourself up for success. That is spiritual authority. Knowing yourself. Okay, verse 13. Um, Use every piece of armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil so that after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Put on the sturdy belt of truth, the armor of God's righteousness. For the shoes you put on are peace that come from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In every battle, You will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. Okay, let's go over this. It talks about many different armor of God, and one is standing your ground and putting on the belt of truth. So I want to read Ephesians um, 119. Let's talk about truth. Verse 19. I'm sorry, um, Ephesians 1, starting with 19. I've gotten to Galatians. I pray that you'll begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. He is now far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything in this world or in the world to come. And God has put all things under the authority of Christ And he gave him this authority for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body filled with Christ, who's filled with everything, everywhere in his presence. Did you get that? Paul is saying, I am praying that you come to understand the truth. Here's the truth. There's an incredible greatness of his power for us who believe. An incredible greatness of power. Here's part of the belt of truth. There's an incredible greatness of power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is ours. And now Jesus is far above anything, anything that would try to come against us. And we're seated in heavenly places too. Let me tell you where it says that in Ephesians 2, it says, in 6, it says, For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and we are seated with him in heavenly realms because we are one with Jesus. Did you get that? He says, this is where I'm seated, far above any ruler, any leader, any principality, any demonic thing. This is where I'm seated. And guess what? I brought you up with me because I'm one with you. You're not a wimp. (laughs) That doesn't sound like a wimp. We're powerful. We have authority. The problem is we're not using it. We need that belt of truth 
because we're believing a lie. I have no authority. The enemy's bigger than me. The sin is bigger than me. I'm overwhelmed. Fear is bigger than me. Whatever, whatever it is, you can fill it in. But that's not true. That's not the truth. The truth is we're one with Jesus seated in heavenly places. And he said, I give you all authority to trample on everything. So that's the truth. And then shoes of peace. Everywhere we go, we carry the Prince of Peace. Peace. Wherever we go, peace should come in our lives and influence the lives around us. If you didn't get to hear my message a couple weeks ago about the good news and preaching the good news and how that releases peace, listen to that because that is what here. This is what I'm talking about. It's... um. It's as we know the good news and hear the good news, it releases peace in our life. And we're called to release good news wherever we go. There's bad news everywhere. The enemy's always talking about bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. But a part of our armor is walking in good news and releasing peace in an atmosphere. I don't care what the news is saying. We're a part of a kingdom, a government that rules over this government. Our words, our thoughts, our authority can change what the news is saying anyways. We have full authority to rule on this earth. But we have to speak good news and speaking good news to ourselves. You know, Eve, the enemy was telling Eve a lie. And if she just told herself good news, right? Walking in good news would have released peace. Oh, no. I'm God's favorite. I'm walking in the righteousness of God. He has given me everything. I'm already made in his likeness and his image. You know, good news would release that. And that's part of the armor of God and the tactics of the enemy because he throws lies and we throw good news, right? He throws defeat and we throw victorious news. Shoes of peace. That's another part of the armor. Faith. It says put up your shield of faith going back to Ephesians because that's, that's the armor of God. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at Satan. It's faith in God. It's not works. It's not works. It's faith in God. My daddy's bigger. My daddy's stronger. My daddy has done this. My daddy is for me. He's not against me. He's given me all authority. You, you have no power in my life. You have no power in my life. And you know what? Maybe you don't quite believe that yet. Yet, Just keep saying it. You're going to believe it. You just have to keep saying it by faith, you know. You might be shaking in your boots, but keep saying it and stand your ground because it's going to become real to you. You have to believe it. There's fiery arrows aimed at us by Satan. Remember last week, Ben said, no weapons formed against us can prosper. But it never says the enemy will never form weapons. He has a lot of time. He's defeated. He has a lot of time. And so he just tries to form all these weapons at us. But the word promises that no weapon formed against us can prosper if we take authority and say, nope, nope, nope. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, salvation as our helmet, our mind. Boy, is this where spiritual warfare takes place. Taking thoughts captive. This helmet protecting our mind. We have the mind of Christ. If he just wants to get the thought in, because if the thought gets in and we dwell on it, it gets into our heart and faith is birthed. And the wrong thing. So it's renewing our mind. And the sword of the spirit, the word of God. We have to renew our mind. We have to know God's word. We have to know God's word. This is our weapon. When we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to pray, when we don't know what to do, it's all here. This is like a sword, and if we don't read it, and we don't meditate it, and we don't chew on it, then it's like a sword, a dusty sword in the closet, never used. It is everybody's responsibility. It's not just on Sunday, let the pastor or the teacher tell you the word. You guys pick up your sword, you know, and teach others how to read their word. 
You know, when you're mentoring people, don't always give them the answer. Say, what is the Holy Spirit telling you? What does the Word say? They have to, we have to know our Word for ourselves because the enemy will use the Word against us. Oh, and that religious spirit loves to use the Word, right? And it just sounds so right. It sounds good. We have to know our Word. This is our weapon of warfare. Listening to the Word. And then it says, praying all times, on every occasion, in the power of the Holy Spirit. This means when things are happening, you stop and pray. You're praying. You're praying. You're praying. You're praying. You're thanking God. You're praying the Word. You're praying Psalms 91. You're thanking God on all occasions. And then it says, also pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to have our heavenly prayer language. This is crucial. I'm telling you, in the New Testament, when people got saved, there wasn't a waiting period. They got baptized in water instantly. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit. We have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. I was thinking, I don't know if this is a good analogy, but this is what I was thinking about. Um, when, when the kids were little, we really wanted to go to Disneyland, but we couldn't afford to go to Disneyland. So we went to downtown Disney, and we went to a restaurant that had a Goofy's Kitchen where they could see some of the characters, and we got them all a gift, but we weren't able to go into the park. So we kind of tricked them, not tricked them, but they were like, it was like an experience, not the full experience, but it was, an, it was a taste because it's what we could do, you know, and we had a great time. But I was thinking like when you get saved, you know, it's like we're on the Disney grounds, right? We're on Disney. But we didn't get to experience the rides or, or, or the whole amusement park. Does that make sense to you? That is being baptized by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're not even enjoying the park. All of the benefits, the power, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be really real with you. I struggled with sin and all kinds of things. It was such a struggle, and I was saved, and I loved the Lord. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, all of that left. I was so empowered to walk in my identity and my authority over sin. And all of those things, the shame, everything left. I just started praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Because here's the thing. When you don't know what to pray, I just love God. He's just given us everything for success. He's saying pray. But God, I don't feel like praying. God, I'm so full of fear. Fine, I'll pray for you. Well, we're going to get this done. And you start praying in the Holy Spirit. He knows exactly what we need. It's praying mysteries. It's praying. He prays better than we even know how to. I told Benjamin this morning, I said, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and God are just like, how can we bless Benjamin? What can we do for Benjamin? Like they strategize how to bring blessing to us. And we don't even know what's going on. We're just praying in the Spirit. Because when you pray in the Spirit, it says your mind doesn't know, right? We're just trusting God for mysteries to happen. There's circumstances. There's things that go on in our life. We do not know how to deal with it in the natural. It's a spiritual thing. And we have the mind of Christ, but there's times that our mind is so full of the earthly carnal things that we can't even get there. And we turn on the, the speaking in tongues, that our heavenly prayer language, and, and pray, and it says utterance, deep groanings and utterances from the Holy Spirit starts interceding for us releasing the perfect will of God in our life. This is a part of our spiritual authority in battles. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I know that it's become an optional thing, but I'm going to tell you for the disciples, it was not optional. It wasn't. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying God doesn't love you, but I'm saying why wouldn't you want it? Right? Why wouldn't we want it? We need it. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, the discerning of spirits, the gift of faith. There is times we don't have faith. We Well, it's there, but we can't tap into it. I should say that. But then the gift of faith comes on us, and we just believe this thing, and we're like, okay, that was not me. Right? The working of miracles. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's times we're like, we need a miracle. 
and the gift of the Holy Spirit rises up in us. These gifts we need. Our heavenly prayer language. Here's another thing about the heavenly prayer language. The enemy hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. He knows what you're strategizing with the Lord. He knows what you're believing for, right? So what does he do? Have you ever gotten an amazing prophetic word and you're all excited and you're praying about it and then it seems like the very opposite thing happens? And he had, when we pray in the spirit, he has no idea what we're saying. I mean, so, I mean, it just scares him. It just scares him. What does he want us to do? Not pray in the spirit, that's for sure. Not read our word, that's for sure. All this empowers us and changes things. There's times where I was driving and the Holy Spirit came upon me and I literally had to get off the road and deep groanings just came and I was just like maybe 30 minutes of interceding in my heavenly prayer language and I knew it wasn't about me. I was interceding for somebody. It says pray for Christians everywhere. The Holy Spirit wants to use us to intercede for others. Like, what if that was one of you <laughs> that I pulled over and I, I, I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit. We're yielding to the Holy Spirit saying, you can use me anytime to pray whatever you need for whomever you need it for. We're submitted to the Holy Spirit. Taxes, that, that's how we pray for one another. Praying and praying in the Spirit. Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem until you are empowered on high. Your destiny is way too great. I have called you to do way too many things, and you need me. You need me. And I say that to you. Your destiny is too great. You're way too important to not be empowered on high and have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for that today. And Maybe you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you don't use your heavenly language very much. challenge you. Do it. Do it. While you're driving, while you're in the shower, while you're in the morning, even just before you pray in the natural, pray in the spirit. Here's what's really powerful. When you pray in the spirit, sometimes Jesus does give us, the Holy Spirit gives us the interpretation, and then we know how to pray in the natural. Not always. Sometimes we pray in the spirit and we don't know. But sometimes he gives us the interpretation. All of a sudden, we have the most amazing idea. That business idea, how to reach that person. And it's because the Holy Spirit's been praying for you, and then he gives you the interpretation, and then you start praying it out in in your natural words. And it's so powerful to do that. I don't think that the disciples could take their authority fully without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And I don't think we can either without the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's no waiting period. I don't know why that's not done at salvation. Like, you need it most at salvation. Is that not true? When I first got saved, I was so thankful for praying in the Spirit because, honestly, I didn't know the Word a lot. You know, as you learn the Word, you can pray the Word, but if you don't know a lot, oh, God, you pray for me. I need help. (laughs) You know? I mean, I still need help, but I needed more help then because my mind, I wasn't, I was just a baby Christian trying to renew my mind. And I need the power of the Holy Spirit. There's such authority when we walk in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus conquered sin. If sin is ruling in your life, it's a lie. I know it feels real. I know addictions feel real. I know that stronghold feels real but you have authority to tear it down. You have authority to tear it down. Sin is defeated. Sin is defeated. And and sometimes it's just knowing that. You know, because sometimes we make the sin or the situation or the fear so big, like that garden snake, we have no authority. But you need to speak to that addiction, to that sin, to that situation, that struggle, that stronghold, and say, no, no. You have a no authority in my life. And then you set yourself up for success as well. Don't take your authority and walk right back into it. Hold yourself. Get accountability partners. Do whatever you need to do. You know, the Bible says that if your right hand makes you sin, cut it off. Okay, don't really cut off your hand. 
but it's talking about whatever in your life is not setting you up for success, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Do whatever you need to do. I didn't have much of a social life when I first got saved. Because not, nothing was safe to me but church, you know. I was weak and I was growing. And anytime church was open, I was there. Anytime there was prayer, I was there. I hung around. Do you want to know the truth? I hung around a couple who were in their 70s and another lady who was 80. I did coffee dates with them. I'm 19, 20 years old. I just would glean from them. You know, they would be at morning prayer at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I worked. I woke up early. I was at prayer with them, listening to their prayers, having them pray for me. And then I invited them out to coffee and paid for their dollar coffee at McDonald's. And they just mentored me just in life. Like, they, they, it wasn't intentional, but I just clung to people that I wanted to be like. This was my social life when I got saved. Totally against what anybody in the world, but I don't care. It set me up for success. I'm going to cleave to those I see fruit in their life and what I want. To people who are older and have been there. Set yourself up for success. Take your authority. I was the most shy child you've ever met. To be up here and speak to anybody, I would have never done. But the Holy Spirit, when he came upon me, he made me bold as a lion. At 20 years old, I got to teach at a youth conference in, in front of 500 kids. You would ne I would have never done that. The Holy Spirit allows you to do things you could never do in the natural. That's why we need him. And he usually has you do things that seem like your weakest area <laughs> so he can look so strong. You know, you grow in it, but it's, it's humbling. Like, God, you're here, right? You're with me, right? I need you, God. Because you know you can't do it on your own. And he gets so much glory because you're so surrendered to him. He makes us bold as lion. We have authority over sin. Shame has to go. And when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, this is part of the armor, praying in the Spirit. It gives us identity. It just gives us identity. We just feel empowerment. You know, grace doesn't just mean um, forgiveness of sins. But grace is empowerment to live a godly life before the Lord. We have no excuse not to live a godly life before the Lord. No excuse. Okay, I'm going to read a couple more scriptures and I'm going to end. Oh my goodness, the time just flew by. Okay, Ephesians 5. I'm going to start Ephesians 5 verse 1 to 4. Follow God's example in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love for others, following the example of Christ who loved you and gave himself as a sacrifice to take away your sins. And God was pleased because um, that was a sacrifice, like a sweet perfume to him. Let there be no sexual immorality or impurity or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. And you can be sure that no immorality, well, I'm going to end for, no obscene jokes, foolish talk, or coarse jokes. God doesn't even want us to talk about what the enemy's doing. Not even talk about it. It shouldn't even be in our language, not even a part of it. But do you see here, but to be thankful, to be thankful. We're worshiping God, we're speaking good news that this is our destiny, to follow God's example in everything we do. And then in verse 10, um, it says, Try to find out what's pleasing to the Lord and take no part in worthless, worthless deeds of, the, um, of evil and darkness, but instead rebuke and expose them. It's even shameful to talk about the things that are ungodly that people do in secret. He doesn't even want us to talk about it. But we speak good news. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit to know what is pleasing to the Lord. I feel like when we're baptized with the Holy Spirit and we have the gifts, we have a greater understanding of how to live a godly life and empowered to do it. It is so hard without the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe. Salvation is powerful, but we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to help us resist the enemy in those evil things. 
verse 18, it says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. But instead, let the Holy Spirit fill you and control you. You know that we can be drunk in the Spirit. (laughs) That is better, better than anything in this, this world can give us. The enemy takes what God does and perverses it. I've never been drunk. I've never been drunk. But I think people who are drunk look really foolish. (laughs) But I will take some wine from heaven. And I will look foolish from the Lord. Because that wine will change me forever. And there's no consequences. I don't have remorse in the morning. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah, no headaches. There is things in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, that will so thrill us, that will fill us up, that will give us so much peace and so much joy, and it's all available to us. We were at a conference, and people were getting drunk everywhere with the Holy Spirit. And it was amazing. I was like, God, I want to get drunk in the Holy Spirit, you know? Okay, I'm going to end with this. 2 Peter 1.3, just in case... You didn't get anything else. You're going to get this. And his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. And through our knowledge of him who's called us by his own glory and goodness. His glory, his goodness has called us. His divine power has given us everything we need to live a godly life. I cannot stand the teachings that it's such a struggle to serve Jesus is so hard. What? It was hard without Jesus. That was hard. I've been there, done that. I would be at church, but I had no empowerment. That's hard. To live for Jesus, are you joking? Are you joking? We have everything, everything. Take my name, take my blood, take my armor, take my word. Sit sit with me. You don't know how to pray? I'll pray for you. I mean, like, we have no excuse. We have no excuse. He's given us everything we need to live. Because, you know, as a mom, too, I'm thinking, how am I going to raise these godly kids in this world? How am I going to do it? Ah, his divine power. His divine power. Everything my kids need, everything I need, everything you need to live a godly life, a fulfilling life, a victorious life, walking your destiny. You need to start taking authority over your life. Like Ben said last week, if you don't, somebody else will. If you don't take your authority, somebody else will. The enemy will love to come in. Thanks for watching the Palabra de Vida YouTube channel. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send us a message through our social media, which is on the description below. If you want to stay connected, you can download our mobile app on the App Store or Google Play. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and God bless you.